Nation. This bout is three five rounds in the bantamweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man the mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and two losses. He stands one of 67 centimeters tall and weighs a ready 61.6 kilograms. Representing Fight Baza Jim and Fight out of Uzbekistan. Please welcome Maruf Jung Mama Rosiko. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man of the mixed martial art is making his professional debut tonight. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 61.68 kilograms. Representing sheriff sure fighters and fighting out of Tajikistan, give it up for Adam Minzola Saeed Your referee is Shermatov Abdo Fatal. Phil, our undercard is a Central Asia extravaganza. We have no Uzbek versus Uzbek fights. This, the first fight, is Uzbekistan versus Tajikistan. A fight we're all very much looking forward to. As a big fan of the striking, we have a master of sports in kickboxing. We have a two-time national boxing champion. Interesting to see how quick or how long these guys stay on the feet, Kirik until somebody drops. Both guys fighting out of the orthodox stance and spinning, he kicked out open up from Abdomen Zoda, showing no signs of nerves in his professional debut here. Just caught on the gloves with that spinning heel kick, but that's a sign of intent right now, isn't it, Kirik? It is, Humayun is showing a great deal of poise right now, in on that single. And gets the takedown, he is a shot. Successful. Got to avoid the triangle now. He hit a shot there, tried to pull it and it's going to back first, but as you say, creeping that guard up, you wonder just how much of a ground game does Abdomen Zuda have, given the fact that all his accolades are in the striking realm. Good stand up, Twice he's gone with that spinning back kick, might be going to the well a little bit too much with it. Nice and calm from Maruf John, big shots being landed! These guys are not wasting any time whatsoever. Lead head kick attempted there by Saeed Humuyun. Big swing and a miss, but lands in top position. Does Maruf John? Saeed Humuyun showing where he's comfortable, and that's at long range with the kicks. Much less comfortable exchanging in close. We're going to see how comfortable he is fighting off his back now. This is among the most miserable places to be in mixed martial arts. He has that guard open, and that's usually indicative of a fighter trying to do something, trying to enact something happening. If he closes that guard, you know that it'll be more of a stalling technique. Nice work from Mama Zekov trying to get his opponent pinned up against the cage. This is one of the big questions now. It used to be you wanted to stay in center cage. Uh, you wanted to get your opponent up against the cage because they couldn't stand up. But this sport has evolved now, and a lot of a lot of fighters are actually good at using that fence to pop up to standing. Oh. And we've got a full mount, Phil. Saeed Humiyun tried to use the butterfly hook to create space, but now he gives up the back. Both hooks in. Mamar Azikov trying to work for a rear naked choke. Saeed Humiyun might have just it's been rolling on the glove. Close. Awesome. It's getting closer. That's underneath the it's chin. Over. He's got, there's the top, ladies and gentlemen. Maruf John Mamar Azikov with a huge win. Continues the winning streak. Three fights three submissions ladies and gentlemen the uzbek fighter maruf john mamara zikov gets a big win tonight uzbekistan is up one and early your winner by rear naked choke from uzbekistan maruf john Watch the hands here, switches from the bike. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition.
Mashram John Ruzi Boyev took former champ Amin Ayub to the limit on his Brave CF debut and is now back for his first promotional win. When he takes on Niazadeen Rizbaev, who is eager to maintain his undefeated record against his more experienced foe. Coming up next, Mash Ramjan, Black Junior Ruzi Bayov, takes on Niazadeen Rizbaev in a super lightweight bout. Here we go, Brave Nation. This next battle is three five-minute rounds in the super lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of three wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 74.7 kilograms. Representing Sapsen Jim and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan. Please welcome Niazidin Reese Bajel. And his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 15 wins, 4 losses, and 1 draw. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 74.46 kilograms. Representing the Sultan team and fighting out of Uzbekistan. Please give it up for Mashrap John Black Jr. Ruzi Your referee is Sharipov Izzat. Brave Nation, both of these fighters have a penchant for taking their opponent out early. One of these two is going to drop fast. Hold on to your papachas. Hold on to your hats. It's just about to happen. Huge fight in prospect. Speaking of prospect, 3 and 0 versus 15, 4 and 1. What a name Niazidin could make for himself against Masrab John Ruziboyev here. Big shot right down the middle from Ruziboyev. Likes to start early, likes to start aggressive. Swing and a miss. Needs to defend the takedown now. I think you may see this be. Oh, jumps on the guillotine choke. This looks tight, Carrick. This is tough. It's over. In just 19 seconds of the very first round, Uzbekistan, stand up for your local hero, Masrab John Ruziboyev. Uzbekistan is now 2 and 0 oh against Central Asia. First fight. Tajikistan fell, second fight. Kyrgyzstan fell, Uzbekistan is up two, two, nothing. That is the ninth first round finish in the career of Masrab John Ruzi Boyev. Incredible. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, Uzbekistan, what a great finish to our second bout. This comes to an end in 18 seconds of the very first round. Your winner, by guillotine, from Uzbekistan, Mashrub Chong, Black Junior, Rose Boyev. At 19 seconds, Mashrub John Ruzi Boyev writing his name into the Brave CF history books with a beautiful guillotine choke submission. I want to add, Phil, that pulling guard in a mixed martial arts in a mixed martial arts bout takes an awful lot of courage and awful lot of confidence. This is not a sport. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Hotam Boynazarov is looking to earn the biggest win of his career while maintaining his undefeated status. Against Altenbeck Arabayev, who is eager to represent Kyrgyzstan and use his experience to get a big victory in his international debut. Coming up next, Hotam Boynazarov takes on Altenbeck Arabayev in a super welterweight matchup. This next battle is three five-minute rounds in the super welterweight division. 
Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner, this man the mixed martial artist with a fresh record of three wins and two losses. He stands 176 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.06 kilograms. Representing Mukhaled Umar and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan. Put your hands together for Altenbeck. Adi Baez! And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man of mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of three wins and no losses. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.7 kilograms. Representing Nerf Club and fighting out of Uzbekistan, please welcome Hotel. Tail of the tape, both men relatively young, 23 and 25 respectively. Supremely well conditioned athletes. Uzbek versus Kyrgyzstan, who's going to take it? Both men look primed, ready to go. Referee having to push them back a little bit. We've got a knight here vying for Central Asian supremacy. So far, Uzbekistan is up by two. Central Asian supremacy. That had a lovely ring to it, just like the gong we heard there to initiate the first round. Boys Nazarov on the outside, implementing little bits of lateral movement. You can see both men are wrestlers from their base, nice and wide. Who's going to throw first? Who's going to commit to the strikes first and leave themselves vulnerable to a potential takedown? Very interesting, Phil. They're both fighting from a wrestler's stance. If you're a striker, you put your strong side back. Wrestler, strong side forward. Both of them are, from the combat sports perspective, southpaws. Just trying to find those little enemies. And again, that's a great point, Kerry. Southpaw versus southpaw. How strange will that be for one another? Because as a southpaw myself, there's not a lot of his knocking about. It's very, very unusual. I've seen it only a handful of times. Card getting behind both fires almost. Altenbeck stalking, but moving backwards doesn't always mean you're falling to your aggressor. He could be trying to draw his opponent in so he can level change, get in on those hips. He has that rear hand primed and ready to go. It's almost as if he's waiting for Arik Baev to step in and just ping that right down the center line. Your forward movement doesn't necessarily indicate aggression in this sport. What's going on? There it is. And on a single leg, gets it a beautiful reversal. What a sweep. Finds himself landing big shots to the side of the head. These shots are legal. Alton Beck showing phenomenal wrestling on the world champ. As far as I'm concerned, these shots are fine. Altenbeck just trying to, to make his opponent uncomfortable. Needs to be wary of getting his back taken here, does Boyz Nazarov. So impressive, Phil, to see more of a wrestler ride than the jiu-jitsu based positions that we normally see. Yeah, it's, it is classic wrestling with big strikes. Little warning not to hit the back of the head. And again, like you alluded to at the start of the broadcast, the, the man being hit also has a responsibility here when these shots come in. If he turns his head away before the shots left the chamber and heads to the back of the head, it's a perfectly legal shot. That exactly. clipped the ear. That's clipping the ear. That's a perfectly legal shot. It's another way of looking at the issue, Brave Nation, is if the shot that you throw comes somewhere in the back of the head, but it gets a piece of the ear, it is a legal shot. Wrestler is now on his back. Boy Nazarov trying to work in for a Kimura here, trying to get that grip. Beautiful thing about that Kimura grip is it doesn't just threaten a submission, but it also threatens sweeps. But Arik Baia very much wise to it and just establishing his position and side control here. Constant movement from Arik Baev. Again, Boy Nazarov trying to get in on that Kimura grip on the right side of Arik Baev. Trying to use it to sweep here. In this position, Arik Baev can grab his own. Oh! No! He doesn't quite have the leverage to get the submission, but he may use it to sweep. He needs to hook up a leg. A beautiful work to transition into north south. Beautiful work to keep that key lock. 
He's going to have to try and cut the angle, get his guard back, or at least get half guard back to make this position tenable for him. And he's still holding on to that grip. Extended out, may have been a little tender damage right there. He is tenacious with it, but Arik Baev able to weather the early storm. No longer 90 seconds to go in our first round here. Wildly partisan, Uzbek crowd trying to lend oh. their fighters some, some strength. Huge left over the top from Boy Nazarov. That's going to earn the respect of Arik Baev. Again, both fighters now just composing themselves a little. Frenetic pace to this opening round. Hook to straight combination from Boy Nazarov. And now he's going to be thinking about the takedown and thinking about the wrestling prowess of Arik Baev. Swing and a miss. Beautiful timing to duck under. But nice heavy hips from Boy Nazarov here. And again, Phil, we're seeing that ankle being held. We're seeing it held twice now. These are wrestling rides. These are not the, the jujitsu based positioning that we ordinarily see here. It's very, very exciting for me to see a little bit of a different flavor on the sport. And that's one of the things that I liken the Brave Combat Federation World Tour to. It's like going to little restaurants in, in different neighborhoods with different cuisines than the one you're used to. That transition there, speaking of cuisine, was absolutely delicious from Arik Baev. Was in the turtle position, has now slowly, incrementally parlayed that. Probably significant, but they hurt. They were probably the most significant strikes of the round. That was, for my money, the most beautiful moment in that sport. I thought there was going to be a Second round, here we go. Let's see if they pick up where they left off. Both men now, oh, big shot over the top from Arik Baev. Kotam's been told by his corner to be a little bit more aggressive. I think they, th they believe he did not win this first round. They want him to go out there, what they know he can do. Both these men have dynamite in their left hands, as we say. Both have wins by way of KO or TKO. But Nazarov trying to attack the body a little bit. I like the way he's switching up the strikes now. He's landing punches to the body, to the head, landed a decent leg kick there. He's definitely the more active fighter with regards to his movement and volume and frequency of shots in the second round. Kotum's corner has oh. lit a fire under him and it is paying off right now. Nice stiff jab, but he needs to be wary of dipping his head in when he throws that jab. He's coming off the center line with it, but he's right into a check hook potentially from Arik Baev. Nice one, two. Doesn't quite land flush, but gets the attention of Arik Baev. Southpaw versus Southpaw leading itself to a very, very interesting chess matchup. And on a single as Arik Baev runs the pipe beautifully on it, but could potentially get caught in a guillotine here. Oh, Not quite there. Oh, the head looks like it's slowly popping out. Chin is our, it's also stuffed. It's a little bit hard to breathe in that position. Boy Nazarov. Risk gets a little bit higher. Boy Nazarov's leaning back. He's readjusted beautifully. This is a lot more dangerous. Instead of flat backing, he's now setting up into his opponent. You just wonder how much of a squeeze does Boy Nazarov want to commit to it. He's, now, he's still got a hold of the neck, but he's not. There, he's let it bails. go. Well, he did a great job of setting it up. Realized he didn't quite have it. Didn't want to burn those arms out. Be on bottom without the ability to defend himself adequately. And now he's gone back to that figure four potential Kimura grip. Arik Baev just trying to ride it up and work his way up the hips. Potential for a back take here. Finds himself now in that side control position. Again with the Kimura attempt by Nazarov. He needs to get that knee, that left knee tucked right in. Create a shield with it. Abandons it and now finds himself on his back with Arik Baev inside his guard. The guard of Boy Nazarov is open. Again, will he try and dig in for that Kimura? Yes, there it is. This seems to be a go-to of his. There is so much you can do with that Kimura, with that figure four arm lock. 
Digging in deep. You can sweep with it, submit with it. You can break an elbow with it. But every time, Harik Bayev has Remy and Kamen. Right now, he takes the back. Both hooks in. He's a little bit too high for my liking. I'd like to see him get his own hips a little bit further down, but he's landing big shots here. We are starting to see tradi more traditional jiu-jitsu-based rides. That would be preparatory in all likelihood to oh. a submission attempt rather than just strikes. Big shots here from Arik Bayev. Buenos Aires doing a good job to try and get up. If you are Arik Bayev in this situation, do you grab a leg? Just as I say that, he grabs the leg. And the words of one of my countrymen, I predict these things. Trying to stretch him out for that Shari Pov stretch. Momentarily, I thought he was trying to hit a banana split there, but again, the pendulum swings in this fight. Boy, Nazarov with huge grinding points. Fantastic little scramble there. That what you saw, Brave Nation, is what this sport comes down to. Nobody's oh. got a clear, clear advantage. Huge. And whoever goes the hardest reaps the reward. Boy, Nazarov landing absolutely huge shots here. How much is fatigue? Playing into the part of Arik Bayev. Shot after shot after shot. Phil. Ladies and gentlemen, seconds we could be looking at the end. Seconds away. Huge shots. He's got it's over. Set. Ladies and gentlemen, Boy Nazarov, the Uzbekistan fighter, runs his record to four. Making use of one of the most closely contested fights we had ever seen. I was thinking, you know, if this goes to the judges, if these rounds play out in very much the same way that they had, Phil, some of these, those grappling these, exchanges. Phil, these, these Central Asian fighters don't need judges. These fighters are not here to wall and stall. They are not here to lay and pray. They are here to finish. Some of those grappling exchanges were simply exquisite. I know as a purist when it comes to all things grappling, Kirk, that you appreciate some of that. All right, are you absolutely kidding me? Another incredible battle inside the cage. This one comes to an end at four minutes and eight seconds of the very second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes from Uzbekistan, Hartem This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Mamorzan Kamidov is coming into his international debut hungry to extend his win streak as a pro. As he takes on Yirazan Zanabekov, who will look to take advantage of his experience to get one more big win on his record. Coming up next, to kick off Brave CF 59, Mamorzan Kamidov takes on Yirazan Zanabekov in a middleweight bout. All right, Brave Nation. This next battle is three five-in rounds in the middleweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of three wins and two losses. He stands one. 75 centimeters tall and weighs already 82.56 kilograms. Representing Akbars and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan, please welcome Erzhan Janekov. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of one win and no losses. He stands 182 centimeters tall and weighs already 84.36 kilograms. Representing Amir Tabur and fighting out of Uzbekistan, please welcome Malushan Hamio. Your referee is Shermatov Abdo Fato. Of the tape. You gotta love that ceremonial sounding gong. Fantastic. Throwing you back to something of the days of Enter the Dragon or something very primal. What we've got here, Phil, there was a little bit of sweat left over from the previous bout on the floor. Both fighters felt like their 
Uh, footing might be a little unsteady. And the referee told him, fight on. Both fighters feeling each other out just a little bit. Here's Janzani Bekov, has his chin a little bit too high for my liking, Kirik. He's not quite shelling up the way that you would anticipate. When he's moving back, that chin's a little bit high. If Mamorjan doubles up on his jab and throws perhaps a... Oh, big shot over the top. I definitely rocked him right into the guillotine choke. Just a little too quick, showing he's got great talent. Was just a little too excited jumping in on that ghillie. Thought about working for the armbar and Shani Bekov, but still a little bit unsteady on his feet. Fighters are complaining about a little bit of moisture on the cage, but... Referee's calling time. Shani Bekov still compromised. Very, very, very lucky moment for the man from Kyrgyzstan. That's exactly what it is. If ever there was a fortuitous break in the action to get a cage floor sorted, it's working out very much in the favor of Shani Bekov because he was very much compromised by that head kick. The, there's a huge difference, Brave Nation, between taking a shot to the head and taking a shot to the body. A shot to the body is cumulative. It, it lowers the defenses a little bit for the next minute or two. A shot to the head is terrible. You don't know where your legs are. You're on what's called Queer Street for five to 10 seconds, and then you're right back to normal. That's what we got right here. That head is completely recovered. John Bon Jovi once said, shot to the heart, you're too late. Shot to the head in mixed martial arts, and you are too late. It'll be interesting to see if Zani Bekov has made the necessary adjustments to keep himself in this fight, i.e. keeping his chin down. Zani Bekov fired up to be in here now, and that chin is tucked. Sometimes it takes a kick to the face to warm a fighter up. In and the double, beautifully. Time takedown. Could find himself locked in an armbar here. Armbar dead, triangle denied, armbar denied. Sweep denied so far. Trying to roll into a knee bar, a heel hook. Nice stiff jab from Maru John. Again, as Zani Bekov is moving backwards, he leaves that chin in the air, but scores another takedown landing right into side control. Schoolyard headlock from Mahmoud John. But again, guillotine coming. Guillotine or a 10 fingered choke, Kirik. He's digging in deep for it. Hamidov needs to set through out of this. Successful defense so far from bottom. So successful. We may see a transition to a back take. Trying to work that arm in, guillotine is Zani Bekov. Can't quite see. He's landed some decent shots just underneath the armpit. Oh, he got rocked there. Once Phil, that is, a, that is among the most telling things you can see in this sport. No hook when guillotine. When somebody runs, looking for it. Has the hooks in now. Bicep control, bicep grip, but doesn't look like he's underneath the chin. Big he's, pressure on that neck, but not enough. He's doing the right thing by fighting the top hand. This looks tight. It looks like it's getting even tighter, Carrick. He needs to get two on one, but his arm is trapped. He has only one arm with which to fight the top arm. You can see his arm is trapped underneath his body. That's brilliant work. Oh, but transitions out of it. How tough are both these guys? Phenom fight just as expected. We are in Central Asia. These are Central Asian warriors. Zani Bekov bloodied up, wearing the fight a lot more than Hamidov. How dangerous is Hamidov off his back? 3-0 as a professional. None of his wins have come by way of submission, though. Bekov standing back up. It'll be interesting to see if he dives back into the guard or if he chooses to stand. Hamidov back up. Hamidov has been having the advantages on the ground. Up and down again, it would seem. Trying to get in on that single, but now eating big shots for his trouble. Tables are turning. That's it. It was time to bail on that single. Yeah. And now he may try and scoop his left leg round and use it as a hook. There it is. Lands right into the side control. Jumps seamlessly like a hot knife through butter into the mount position. Here come. Has a full minute with which to work. May try and work for the arm Looking bar Looking for the arm bar. Oh, high, high, high level technique here. Beautiful transition. Needs to try and roll the rest a little bit. Beautiful job to kick away the bicep. 
of Hamidov. Beautiful technique. Oh, but just a, they were a little too slick with sweat. There may have been a thought the up kick was illegal. I don't believe it was. Referee checked to make sure the mouthpiece was in place and the action returns. Johnny Bekov looks a little bit gassed here, Kirik. The hands are low, the mouth is open. Hamidov, if he's able to, really needs to turn up that pressure with less than 30 seconds to go in the first round. Erjan is taking some big shots to the head. Those shots are exhausting. They literally cut into the cardio ability. If you were in the corner right now of Hamidov, you'd be telling him to push forward, put everything you have into the final 10 seconds here. Again, that chin of Hamid, oh, sorry, that chin of Zani Bekov right up in the air when he throws. That mouthpiece, face is now wet. Not gonna, he's not gonna get cut in the next minute or so of this round. It is time to fight down and bang. There was that head kick from Hamidov that rocked Zani Bekov. And like you say, Kerik, he needs to up the frequency. He needs to land the cleaner strikes here and put the pressure on Zani Bekov. Phil, I'm not seeing the success, the close, close success with the submission attempts that I am. For fighter health and safety. Second round of a very interesting back and forth bout between well, Mamur John Hamidov and Irjan Zanibekov. Mamur John striking. Oh, eight, nice stiff job. Eight a shot forward. He smiled. That means that hurts. That is international body language for yeah, you caught me, bro. Very unorthodox style by Jani Bekov. Always looks like he's kind of grimacing and pained to be there. A wee unorthodox jukebox, so he is. Mohamed John fainting a little, and there it was. It's Jani Bekov who's calling Mamur John on. Oh, beautiful job into the takedown. Absolutely phenomenal timing. Jab to snap the head back, bring the attention up, literally brings the eyes up, followed by a level change in on the hips. Takedown not quite completed. Certainly no useful attacks available from here yet. Referee was not impressed. That's a Standing both of them up. Very quick stand-up from the referee. Obviously favors the, the stand-up. Both these guys are starting to look a little bit fatigued. Carrick, the shots are coming just a little bit slower. And it's going to come down to who wants it more. But again, Jani Bekov with the takedown. The thing you have to wonder with the takedown is how much does it also take out of the guy perpetrating it? It is one of those situations in this sport where it's easier to defend than it is to attack. Couple of nice up kicks to the chest. Jani Bekov on his back now. Hamidov trying to get in and land shots of his own, but like I say, both these fighters are running on adrenaline and heart right now, bound to be tired. This beautiful nation is, Phil, a desert nation, and we're under television lights, which are quite strong. There is a lot of heat in that ring, both literally and figuratively. Oh, Beautiful sit out and reversal. Johnny Bekov now finds himself on top. Needs to be wary of the triangle here. Can't quite see it now. Again, just wriggles his way out of it. Right now, he could just creep up incrementally into the side control position. Johnny Bekov may not feel he's got a lot of time on the ground. Hamidov's going to give up his back here if he's not careful. Trying again that schoolyard headlock, perhaps showing a little bit of relative inexperience when it comes to the grappling. Potential knee to the body coming up here. There it is. Oh, he's, not, he's sneaking his arm underneath for a no-hook rear naked choke. Can't quite see if he's underneath the chin, but he is trying for it. Very difficult to get the rear naked choke without the hooks in, especially when you're fatigued at this stage of a fight. Could change it into a sit-through bulldog choke if he has the grip for it. You can see he's trying to connect his hands to his bicep here, Kirik. He is, there is a little lull in the action though. Both these fighters realize 
They're just barely past the halfway mark in this bout. And they're not certain they've got the gas to finish it. Little bit of a resting period here. They're gonna catch their breath and return to attacking in earnest. Next 15 seconds or so. Garrick, I hate to step over you, but none of these guys are called earnest. Big shots being landed here. And again, both fighters a little bit labored. Deep press from a lot of them. Hands down from Zani Johnny Bekov. Bekov is, is gonna, he's gonna get rocked. Oh, he's Mama gonna get rocked. Him. You can see it in his legs. He was on wobbly legs, but now Mama John turning up the pressure. Mama John needs to separate oh, he and grabbed, call him up. He grabbed the fence to pull himself closer. I would have rather seen a stop in the accident, a stand up there. That was an incredibly illegal move. But big shots being landed here by Hamidov. That's it! Referee oh. stops the fight! But if the position wasn't secured by the fence grab from Mama John Hamidov. We maybe know we're, this is past the fence grab. We're just seeing, and there it was. Fair call on that stoppage. Staying turtle up, hanging onto a leg, covering one half of your face. All right, Brave Nation, another exciting battle. This one ends at four minutes and 30 seconds of the very second round. Your winner by TKO, due to punches, from Uzbekistan, Marushan Mukabukashi Hamedo! Here we go, Brave Nation! This next battle is three five-minute rounds in a catchweight bout of 68 kilograms. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner! This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of one win and one loss. He stands 167 centimeters tall and weighs already 67.92 kilograms. Representing I Bak and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan. Please welcome Baki Bek Akjokai Naristan. And his opponent. Fighting on the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of six wins and no losses. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 67.64 kilograms. Representing Amir Tamur and fighting out of Uzbekistan. Please welcome Sharif Kushayev. Your referee is Sharipov Isaac. Huge respect for Bakitbek Ulu Noristan for taking this bout on just two days' notice. As we say, he's going in there with all to gain, not a lot to lose, but the weight of expectation lies heavy on the shoulders of Sharif Kushiev. Can he make it a clean sweep for Uzbekistan in our preliminary portion of the card, making it 5 and 0 oh for the Uzbek fighters? He is a proven finisher, so he will be looking to get in there and get it done nice and early. As I alluded to, the majority of his wins coming in the very first round. Sharif pressing, fainting, trying to get reads in his opponent. Oh, uh, counter hook, a counter check hook from It's going to be a short opposition. night, Phil. It's going to be a very, very short night. Oh, that has to be once again one of the quickest finishes in the history of Brave Combat Federation. Just the 19 seconds once again. This time, I was kind of, we're seeing a replay now. We could essentially see a replay of the entire fight. Just bang and, shots, yep. yeah. Again, referee stopped it at the appropriate time. You can see, Bakitbek's base breaks, falls. All right, ladies and gentlemen, another incredible bout inside the Brave CF 59 cage. This comes to an exciting end at 18 seconds of the very first round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes from Amir Tamur Club, Bukana. Give it up for Sharif Koshayev.
There you have it, the official decision. Sharif Kushiev with a huge win. Seven. The rest of Central Asia tournament. There you Brave see. Nation, that concludes our undercard. We're now going to move it up to the main card. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Ayu Gaziev is eager to finally get his hands raised in the Brave CF arena and will pull no stops to get his wish. When he takes on Sandrbek Yirkanov, who is looking to defend his Uzbekistan roots in front of his home fans. Coming up next, Ayu, the puncher Gaziev, takes on Sandrbek Yirkinov in a super lightweight contest. With a professional record of 12 wins, 3 losses, and 1 draw, he stands 175 centimeters tall and weighs already 75.1 kilograms, representing Top Team Salzburg and fighting out of Austria. Please welcome Ayu Gaziev. Your referee is the bandit, Dickie Larkin. Phil, I was privy to some of the negotiations around these main card fights. These Uzbek fighters over and over and over again said, give me the best opponent you can find. That's what we're going to see right here. You have to respect that. Speaking of the best you can find, one of the best referees in the business, Deki, the banded Larkin taking charge for the first time tonight. As we say, it's a huge step up in competition for Sanjabek Irkinov. Ayub Gaziev does have that pro kickboxing experience. I asked him why make the transition to MMA. He said there's just more money and more fun to be had in MMA. You can tell those leg kicks early on. He has such a wonderful grounding in the striking arts. Inevitable takedown attempt from Sanjar Beck. It's going to be a huge moment. If the puncher can stay standing, he can do what he loves to do in that strike. Ends up on his back. He's going to have to do what he doesn't love to do, and that's work from his guard. Transitioning to the single leg is Irkinov, but needs to be wary of that neck. Beautiful takedown. That is huge for Irkinov. What kind of resistance can Gaziev offer off of his back? Right now, Irkinov's, Irkinov's landing some nice shots. Monster moment from Sanyarbek. The Uzbek fearful getting behind their man. Brave Nation, even those of you that are familiar with the jiu-jitsu game, when you're jammed up against the fence like this, it's very, very, very hard to do anything but try to stand. Gaziev has that guard closed, but he's creeping up nice and high, maybe trying to look for the likes of an arm bar. Irkinov doing a good job of following the hips of Gaziev, never letting him square off or never letting him create that angle for himself. Punches are starting to get through. Very obvious reddening on the face. When the punches start to get through, the reflexes slow, slow a little bit. And Phil, that's when the elbows get through. Elbows are slower than punches, yeah, so they're a see. little bit harder to land. But when, when you tired your opponent, when you punish them a little bit, that's when those elbows can start to oh, come down. Cutting through right down the middle, Carrick. When the elbows start to land, that's when you get cuts, and that's when you get a stoppage. Split. Oh, there's already a little bit of a cut on the eye of Gaziev, I think, Kerik. Can't quite see from here, but he's done a good job to turn out and get his back off against the cage right now in the open forum of the mat. Sinjarbek clearly wants to get... There he is. He's jamming his opponent up against that fence again. Oh, and that cut is really starting to open up. Gaziev needs to get his feet on the hips of Irkinov, push off and create a little bit of space, but very intelligent MMA from Irkinov right now. Uzbek man has been controlling the tempo and cadence and flow of this fight pretty much from the beginning. Brave Nation, we are only past the halfway mark in this, the first round of the first fight on our main card. This is a grueling, brutal fight for Ev Gaziev, the puncher. As his name indicates, he wants to be standing on his feet, knocking his opponent out. 
Oh, transition Beautiful into the mount. Beautiful sweep. Oh, right into the mount position, out of nowhere from Gaziev. Now Gaziev's landing huge concussive shots, almost punishing Irkunov for having the sheer audacity to take him down and land shots on him. This is the payback, and it is a beast. Oh, we can, right in front of our broadcast position, we can hear the ferocity on these shots, splitting the guard as Gaziev. You're seeing now why they call him the puncher. These hands are heavy. Oh, he's a big elbow to the chops. He can't just lie here prone with the hands covering himself. This is not intelligent defense. This is just about survival. These punches have the effect of a normal person holding a big rock. Oh, trying to smash the elbow down the middle. But does a great job to transition right back on the feet. Could again lend itself to be advantageous for Gaziev. One minute, Brave Nation, and down again! Beautiful takedown from Irkunov. Just waited for Gaziev to land his shots, to put the plant the feet down a little bit more with the punches. Scoops underneath, gets the takedown. Gaziev did a phenomenal job biding his time, protecting himself to the best of his ability, waiting for that split-second moment when his opponent made a, a, a positional shift that was perhaps half an inch, at most, out of position, took advantage, got that sweep. He's doing the same thing now. Trying to keep himself protected. Trying to throw some shots so the, the judges know that he's still in this game. I would like to see him land some little short elbows from this position. But Gaziev really needs to do something proactive here. He needs to create space. He needs to get his feet on their hips and try and push away. Gaziev in all likelihood wants to open those feet, get a knee shield in, create a little bit of distance, and then use the fence to climb back up to standing where he wants to be. 10 second clapper, Irkunov finishing the round on top and on the balance of play, Kirik, Irkunov spent most of his time in top. To nine in the first round of this, the first fight on the main card. Medics is tending to that cut of Gaziev. It doesn't seem to be in a spot that's impeding the vision just yet, but if you're Irkunov, you're looking at that cut thinking, that is my pinpoint, that is where I want to head. I want to open that up start causing real damage. There you see a beautiful takedown from Irkunov landing in top position. Shot after shot, little short elbow. And if you're in the corner of Irkunov, you're just saying it's a case of lather, rinse, repeat from the first round, right? You are indeed. Gaziev's corner has a much, much tougher time here. If he cut he needs to start, he needs to, he needs to land something really, really damaging. But if you come out only looking for that, you are in position to get taken down. If he gets taken down, all he's gonna do is receive damage. He's got a very tough game. On the foot, implement a little bit of lateral movement. As you say, he can't settle down on those punches, but nice job from Irkunov. It's like he's trying to pressure. Gaziev against the cage and then work for his takedown there. Punch his way into a clinch, perhaps. There are levels to this in terms of punching and everything else. And the puncher is at a higher level. But like a game of rock, paper, scissors, the paper that is takedowns can smother the rock that is punches. And there it is. Nice sprawl from Gaziev. And on the neck this time, pulls guard on it. This looks Unbelievable. deep. Unbelievable. Has the hands connected, and what a turnaround this would be. He doesn't look like he's putting everything into it. Just Senyarbek wants to get those hips, unless he's in far less danger than he appears to be, wants to get those hips a little bit higher. I don't think he's in a lot of trouble here. The guard is quite low of Gaziev. He needs to get that a little bit higher. Can't quite see just. How connected the hands are, but Sanjay Beck doesn't look to be in too much. I say doesn't look to be in too much discomfort. He's getting the neck squeezed off him. But Gaziev is kind of flat backing on it and pulling the neck as opposed to, to oh the head is out. And this is not where Ayub Gaziev wants to find himself at all. Again, as I said earlier, Brave Nation, when somebody pulls guard, when they get that front headlock or that guillotine and they drop to their back, it is a very, very brave, it is a very courageous thing to do and you're seeing why. If it doesn't work, you are on the bottom. Punches are coming down, elbows are coming down, your head gets cut, it's happening right in front of us. Huge shots being landed by Irkunov and this is bound to be frustrating for Gaziev. He 
It looks like he's not 100% sure what to do in this position, but he needs to create space. He needs to get his back to the cage, try and work his way back up, or get the feet on the hips of Irkunov, push off, create space. Here's Irkunov the knee shield I talked about earlier. By itself, it's useless. You need to create space with it. Post a hand, pop up to standing. Anchor position now for Irkunov. Just that half guard. Trying to find those little pockets of space to get the shots in. Decky Larkin is watching very carefully now. You wonder how much fatigue is going to play a part for both men. As Irkunov perhaps in trouble of punching himself out. Stopped it. Referee Decky Larkin calls a halt to the action. No protestation from Ayub Gaziev. That's made. Ayub Gaziev is no slouch whatsoever, an incredibly dangerous fighter. We spoke about just how well credentialed he is. But Ayub Gaziev is a very, very dangerous man. Sanyarbek, <coughs> Sanyarbek, Erkinov is an even more dangerous man. He looked over to the table where the head brave officials are standing. He indicated using MMA sign language that he wants a title shot. Huge moment for the Uzbek fighter. You can see just how much it means to him. Partisan right here going absolutely. Now. All right, Brave Nation, what an incredible battle once again inside the Brave CF 59 cage. This comes to an end at 2 minutes, 35 seconds of the second round. Your winner by TKO due to strikes from Uzbekistan, Sanjabek. Arkinov! Huge respect to Sen Senyarbek Arkinov. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Norzan Akushev has been involved in some of the best fights in Brave CF history and is now ready to get on a winning run. as he faces off against Odebek Tuhirov, an undefeated Uzbek rising star, ready to explode in the international scene. Coming up next, Norzan Bison Aikashev takes on Odebek Tuhirov in a lightweight bout. My brave nation, this next battle is three five minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of six wins and no losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 69.8 kilograms. Representing the Sultan team and fighting out of Uzbekistan. Please welcome Otabek Tahiro. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 12 wins and 3 losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.56 kilograms. Representing underdog team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan, please welcome Nershan Baizan Akishev. Your referee is a son of the home. Again, Phil, I want to say how, how proud I am, how impressed I am by these Uzbek fighters over and over again in making this main card. They asked, give me the best guy you can. You've got somebody who started in January of 2021, only had six fights. He's fighting a beast in Bizon who's 12-3-0. We're about to find out what happens. Akashev, a pro since November of 2017. Definitely has the age in terms of experience. Both these guys got into a little bit of the weigh-ins, which was fun for everybody. Orthodox versus Southpaw, again, another interesting wrinkle to the fight, and something we've seen a couple of times here tonight. This might be, I don't know, the most Southpaw-heavy card in the history of MMA, well, at least in a very long time. May have something to do with the depth of the wrestlers here. Whoa, that was a nasty, that was no wrestler's kick. 
Cheeky inside leg kick, and that's what's open all day long for both fighters, one being orthodox, one being southpaw. Again, it's that battle for the, the outside step, isn't it, Kirk? That space on the outside foot. There's multiple things going on here right now, Brave Nation. They are jockeying for that outside position, but they're also trying to download information on their opponent. What's the opponent's reaction time right now? How do they respond to punches? How do they respond to kicks? What if I level change? And when oh. you get the information you need, you take it home. That's what we saw right there from Odebeck Toksarov. Beautiful work, that overhand into the takedown. Has the hands clasped. Just needs to pull those legs out a little bit. Right now, just solidifying the position against this more experienced opponent who's using that veteran Savi and Guile to work his way back to his feet. Plant it on a hand. Tahirov needs to take away that post, that framing post. Right now, he's just trying to lace up those legs, Kirik. Odebeck does have the takedown, but on the judges' scorecards, it doesn't count for very much yet. That's what you, you do with do it, isn't it? Yeah. What you do with that takedown? If you get somebody down and they pop their hips up, throw an elbow to your head a few times, goes back up to standing, it didn't really count for anything. Slowly and incrementally trying to lace up those legs. This it's is one of the most dangerous moments in the sport. When you stand up, your back is very open to being taken. That's why that was a beautiful wizard there from Bizon. That overhook on the arm stops the back from being taken and sets up takedowns of his own as you're seeing right here. Right now finds himself in the dominant position. Needs to turn in towards Tahirov. Thought about diving on a guillotine choke there. Seemed to lose it just as he was dropping down into it. Can he readjust and get it? But the elbow's just a little high, but that does not feel good. Oh, that looks there tight. There is some pressure on that. He's going about it the right way. Tricky. He's not entirely flat, flat backing. Oh, he switched from the arm end to the high the elbow. This looks super this tight. This is horrible. Could it be the 10th win via submission in the career of Akashev? No, it is not. He needs to let go of that neck or he's leaving himself vulnerable to the Von Flu choke. Should Tahirov be aware of it? Nice work from Akashev to let that go. Beautiful positional offense from Odebeck. Genuinely thought we were going to see the third win via guillotine there in the career of Akashev. It was not to be. Tahirov showing that he very much deserves to hang with the big names of Central Asian MMA here. Again, what we're seeing here is a little bit more of a, a wrestling influenced ride than what we normally see in mixed martial arts, which is a little more jujitsu oriented. Got a solid body lock. Probably going to use that to oh. back souffle. There it was. Shades of WWE with the belly to back suplex. That is serious wrestling pedigree right there. Maybe a Dagestani handcuff coming up. Akashev trying to get in on that figure four, figure four grip and uses it beautifully. It's a phenomenal way reversal. This is such beautiful grappling from both men. Tahirov now trying to get in on a, a guillotine choke, but is impeded somewhat by the cage wall. Switch. Oh, momentarily, I thought he may have been switching there, but nope. Akashev pops the head out, and right now just landing bombs. Uh, Akashev right now wants to start landing big, big shots. He's got 45 seconds to imprint what he does on the judges' minds. 45 seconds in what has been a very, very close round. Close round, very technical. Needs about 30 more of those shots that he just threw. Nice work to cause a little bit of separation there from Tahirov. And lands a nice shot off his back too. Partizan crowd here enjoying it. Beautiful work. Tried the spinning back kick. Right into the guillotine. Akashev trying to drop in onto it. Oh, that looks tight with only 10 it seconds is to go. Tight, Does he have enough time? He's, he's, he's using a positional defense. He's getting past that guard. Opponent no longer has the leverage to make it work. And the round ends. Absolutely phenomenal round from both of these two. Phil, who do you like in this round? 9-10, 10-9. Uh, for me, it has to be a 10-9 round for Tahiro. What he was doing in those positions, he was able to stave off that onslaught from Akashev, he was able to get himself in the dominant position. He showed his calm and savvy when he had Akashev up against the cage. He showed his calm when he was deep in that guillotine choke and was able, I'm not sure if you noticed, 
but was able to land a beautiful little elbow crashing down just on the break. So for my money thus far, 10-9 to Hero. But as I we see, say, Carrick, we are I not see judges. It, Phil. I see it, Phil, the exact same way. It is now 10-9 for Otabek. Now, having said that, I want to point out commentator scores don't mean anything. We're literally looking at this fight in a different way. And I mean that literally. The judges are sitting here and they're looking at the space, but often when standing, looking at the space between the two fighters so their attention doesn't get caught too much one way or the other. That's why fight, fans of fighters often get caught. Of taking that next evolutionary step up in competition. Need to get me one of them gongs. Be a great way to announce your... Oh, big Beautiful head shot! When you see that head fly away, Brave Nation, it means it was a mighty shot. But right now, it's Akashev on top. We know just how tough he is, referencing the fight with Tycoon Kim. He's the type of fighter that can take a lick and keep on ticking. Position is reversed. Bit right now again finds himself in a similar position trying to lace up those legs Khabib style and why is that such a popular go-to now in MMA Kirk? The legs are shelf. It's been known in jiu-jitsu but never used this way when the feet are higher than the hips it's yep. very hard in fact impossible to get off the floor. In order to defend it you typically have to drop at least one hand and push the opponent's hips away then you get punched in the face. Agashev gives up the back in an attempt to get out but right now Needs to be wary of leaving any space with which Tahirov can get a hook in. But he has managed to get back to his feet. Needs to turn in towards Tahirov. Has the wizard. May look to turn in and clamp down on that. Could be a right on there as oh. Uzbekistan. Second there it was. Second huge takedown for Tahirov. Lands himself right in that side control position. Trying to step over in the mount. May step over to lace up the legs. So far this... 92nd intro of the second round has been all to hear of. Agashev may try and again give up his back in effort to get up. Post it on an elbow, has one foot up. There he is, by to his feet. But Ooh, as we've looks seen, like the pilot is setting up another trip. Yeah, I was just about to say what we've seen with to hear of. What goes up must come down. Fantastic trip. Now he needs to turn in towards the hero of does Akashev. What a beautiful reversal. Doing the right job with his arm placement. Switching in the scarf. Make it as light. Yeah, here. I, oh. that, that head control in that position only very, very rarely works. You ordinarily want an underhook on the far side, not just the head, where this can happen. Something you see a little bit more in catch wrestling than you do in mixed martial arts. Just with the frenetic pace of MMA and the, the positional awareness of the fighters, it can be dangerous. Odebeck very wisely in, in these ambiguous positions when it's a little bit hard to figure out. So one guy got the upper body locks, the other guy getting in there for a takedown. If you can land some shots, stomp on the feet a few times, it really matters on the judge's scorecard. Again. Okay, that's oh. tight. But no We're going to see a positional defense again. That's what he's been using successfully. There it was. Oh, switches to north-south, but Akashev again from the bottom. Let's it go, but again, that's just how dangerous Akashev can be with that guillotine. Needs to be aware of eating elbows here. Gives up the back. But there's no quit whatsoever in Nozan Akashev. Every time he finds himself in a disadvantageous position, he's working so hard to make something happen. Phil, when you get phenomenal matchmaking like we've got here in Brave Combat Federation, yep. the, the bouts are really, really even, and that's what makes it really, really exciting. Both these fighters have to dig down. They have to dig deep into their heart. They have to deep, dig deep, deep, deep into their knowledge base and try and find something that the opponent can't quite handle. And whilst Akashev may be 0-2 in Brave, if you look at the people he's fought, Brave 46, he fought Roman Bogatov. Brave 53, that fight of the year contender with Tycoon Kim, he's been in very much against the best the world has to offer. Bogatov at the time, number one ranked in Russia in that weight division, absolutely a beast of a man. I think both fighters understand there's a little lull in the action, we're gonna see him start trying to land some shots. Oh, beautiful, just sneaking. Yep. That underneath the armpit again, the back tick from Tahirov. 
trying to turn out is Akashev, but may find himself getting taken down here again. Nice little trip attempt. Oh, Almost 50 -50. a reversal. And again, takes the back. Fire blanket, ground control and wrestling here from Tahiro. Completely exhausting, grinding game. Add some face punches, add some elbows to the body and the head. And you've got a devastating round. Big shots being landed to finish the round. Beautiful way to end the round. Any question in your mind? On the global stage, barring an injury that we don't know about it, and we don't, Brave Nation, we have not heard of any injuries here. He's in the absolute best shape of his life. It is not a secret that you have to fight five fives at this level. I think he's going to come out guns blazing. I also think Bizon's going to. He's got a brilliant corner. I think they're going to tell him you're down 0-2. Even if you win the next round, you don't win the fight. Get out there and take your man out. So Nur Sultan Akashev has to get will cry, ready to get things going. Cage door close third on final round. Working the midsection well is to hear of. There's that overhand. Oh, potential ninja choke here. Oh, that looks tight, Kerrick. How much does Akashev have left? And he's out! Fighter is out. Absolutely stunning wow. ending to this fight. Bizon's corner told him you got to stop your opponent, and he stopped his opponent early. What a way to silence an odd and brave sorry. combat federation doing exactly what we said he needed to do. Go out, throw the kitchen sink, get the huge win. Absolutely. All right, Brave Nation, what another incredible bout inside the Brave CF 59 arena. This comes to an end at 24 seconds of round number three. Your winner by guillotine, Nershan Bison Akashev. This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Ilyar Ashkenov is eager to kickstart his Brave Combat Federation career by earning his first international victory. When he takes on Husan Atabayev, an impressive newcomer who has eight of nine career victories coming by way of finish. Coming up next, Ilyar Dynamite Ashkenov takes on Husan Anabayev in a featherweight matchup. All right, Brave Nation, this next battle is three final rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins and two losses. He stands 173 centimeters tall and weighs already 69.98 kilograms. Representing Usmanov team and fighting out of Uzbekistan, please welcome Usan Atabaya. And his opponent, fighting! Out of the red corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and 4 losses. He stands 177 meters tall and weighs already 69.8 kilograms. Representing Japan and underdog team and fighting out of Almaty, Kazakhstan. Give him up for Ilya Dynamite Askhanov. Your referee is Sherry Puff. He's out. Big thanks to our sponsor, Akbarion Barakat. Again, big thanks to Akbarion Barakat for sponsoring this Brave Combat Federation 59. After the first loss of the night for Uzbekistan, Khan Husan Atabayev 
reclaim a little bit of national pride or will Ilyar Ashkanov continue the streak for the invaders? Musan Atibayev trying to open up with the stiff jab. Ashkanov walked right into one there. Both these men exchanging stiff shots to begin with, Kerik. People misunderstand the jab in mixed martial arts a little bit because it is a four ounce glove. It can cause a lot more damage. Oh, what beautiful timing by Ashkanov. Sorry to cut you off there, but we had to give props to the beautiful timing on that takedown from Miliar. We've got a sort of a crooked head scissor with one arm included on the leg. Yeah, I think I'm not sure that's in anything yet. It's almost like a modified TP choke right now. But we don't know just how much leverage Atabayev has on it. Husan trying to work the angle, but the head is out. Right into the side control position right now for Ashkanov. And he seems to be going back to the well with this particular submission. Mm, but finds himself in a horrible position right now of having his back taken, but trying to turn in towards Ashkanov and get the takedown. One hook in. For Ashkanov. Looking hard for that second one. He's almost got the leverage to get it in. Creating, trying to pull his opponent up, create that little pocket of space. He has scope now to get that second hook. That's in. It. Oh, he's gone there palm to palm on here, it. Phil. Oh, here we're deep, looking at a very early danger. choke. Very early. This looks deep palm to palm. Here comes it's the top. It's almost over, Phil. I don't he, see an escape. Oh, he's trying to. Oh, that's, that's the it. top. The sixth submission win in the career of Ashkanov. The fourth rear naked choke, a very, very dangerous fighter and the Uzbek crowd, much to their credit, a polite got the position, hooked it in and there you see just the mastery of the grappling from Ilya Ashkanov. Quietness of the crowd, Phil, maybe a little bit of, of being simply stunned. Yeah. That, that rear naked choke sunk fully in just seconds. All right, ladies and gentlemen of Brave Nation, another explosive finish. This bout ends at 1 minute and 37 seconds of the very first round. Your winner, by rear naked choke, Ilya Dynamite Ashkanov! This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. After earning a career-changing knockout in his Brave CF debut, Nemat Abdrashidov is finally back to continue his climb towards the top. As he takes on Ali Khan Hassanov, who has an impressive five wins in his last six fights. Coming up next, Nemat Eagle Abdrashidov takes on Ali Khan Akash Hassanov in a lightweight contest. Brave Nation, this next epic battle is three five in rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man's a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 16 wins and eight losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs already 68.26 kilograms. Representing Hassan Brothers and fighting out of Uzbekistan, please welcome Alec Hong Akash Hassanov. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 16 wins and 8 losses. He stands 177 centimeters tall and weighs already 68.64 kilograms. Fighting out of Kyrgyzstan, please welcome Nimat Eagle Abrachita! Your referee is the bandit, Jackie Larkin. Big thanks to our sponsor, U1 Championship. Again, big thanks to U1 Championship. Tail of the tape, you can see Hasanov, the shorter fighter, the older fighter. But being the shorter fighter may work in his advantage here to try and get in underneath for that takedown or try and land that big right hand over the top. 
which Abrashitov has been vulnerable to in the past. He has a tendency to train track his lead hand, that jab, keep it low. Eagle has already landed one jab and one hook. If you meant the pun of Eagle has landed, that was spectacular, Kirk. Oh, big shot over the top. And on the single leg is Husanov. Oh, beautiful drop down, but Abrashitov in on the neck. Elbow a little too high still, no danger on the trachea yet. It's potential to turn into a slow choke, but it would take five minutes. Both these fights must be said as the early stages, but... And there you go, Phil. These fighters yep. use, rather than hand fighting to get out, they tend to use positional escapes, which are very, very smart. Gets you yeah. out of the hold, and it potentially puts you in a, at a positional advantage where you can land punishment of your own. That also shows the depth of the grappling culture within these Central Asian, Asian regions. I think that's exactly what it is, Phil. They've got a deep understanding of the positional game. Get yourself in trouble, don't just hand fight and escape that problem. Get one step ahead. It's mixed martial arts. You feel that. Chest Has instead of checkers. You feel that Hasanov just has that big right hand over the top, primed and ready to go off the jab of Abrashitov. And again on the single, needs to run the pipe on that. Could go high crotch. Abandons it in favor of trying to get a looping shot over the top. Oh, nice knee to the mid-season from Abrashitov. Brave Nation, sometimes knees like you just saw right there, you can't quite appreciate how nasty you are unless you're sitting a few meters away from them and you can hear the noise. Oh, they are pinpoint. Battle for the underhooks. Double underhooks established here by Husanov, but he's, or Hasanov. He's not quite deep enough yet to connect his hands. Oh, trying to land a big straight right. Was Nenet Abrashitov. Oh, huge kick, but Hasanov eats it. Nemet wants to stay at distance. He doesn't want to wrestle his man. Wants to stay at distance, try and pot shot him from the outside. Got to keep a little bit more, a little more distance between his back and the cage. That's just where he needs to be. Oh, beautiful level change, then back up into the shot. Beautiful oh, shot right behind the ear. Down. There is a thing called the button. One of those buttons is right behind the ear and it just oh. got hit. It's over. There it is. Beautiful stoppage by our referee, Deki Larkin. Nemet Abrashitov with the sixth TKO win of his career. As you say, right on the button there. And here's where the flash happens just there with that shot momentarily goes limp good call by all right him. brave nation another incredible battle inside the brave combat federation 59 cage this bout comes to an end at two minutes and 46 seconds of round number one the tko two to strikes victory for nima eagle abrashito This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Ismail Nardiev, a former world title contender, comes back after earning Fight of the Year honors in 2021 as he looks to position himself for another title shot. Against Bakhtan Zinbakov, an undefeated rising star from Kyrgyzstan, eager to steal the show. Coming up next, Ismail, the Austrian wonder boy Nurdiov, takes on Bekten Zinbikov in a super welterweight bout. Introducing your first warrior, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a perfect professional record of six wins and no losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 79.56 kilograms. Representing Alish and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan, please welcome back then, Chad Bakov. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 21 wins and five losses. He stands 183 centimeters tall 
and raise a ready 79.5 kilograms. Representing Sanford MMA and Top Team Salzburg and fighting out of Austria. Give it up for Ismael, the Austrian wonder boy. No! Your referee is Shogatov Abdul Fato. Before this, our co-main event of the evening, I want to give a quick shout out, say how grateful we are to our sponsor, Gorilla Energy Drink. Ismail Nordiev clearly fired up by that introduction from Carlos Kramer. Huge fight in prospect. Massive step up in competition for Big Ten Johnny Bekov. Ismail Nordiev used to competing on the huge international platform that Bria provides. Trying to get in on the takedown. There you see the wrestling and the striking combined beautifully. Phil Ismail is a superhero right now. He's Batman, he's Superman, he's Spider-Man. Just occupying the center of the Brave Arena. Downloading a little bit of that and now making reads on his opponent. And if he's won the first little battle by defending the takedown and firing off those shots. Nice little feints. And he really just he has such a mastery over distance and control, doesn't he, Kirk? He does. That, that, that defines his game right there. He sets that jab out there, whether he pops it or he leaves it out, tries to control the distance with it, starts taking shots off of there. Now he's going to have to show a little bit diff different part of his game, and he just handled that absolutely perfectly. No. Got the underhook, circled off the fence, got right back to where he want to be, which is distance managing and landing big shots from the outside like the one you saw right there. Another takedown defended beautifully. Going low, then going high, changing the frequency and levels. Very, very smart. Again, just attacking that lead leg beautifully. And now in that Thai clinch, having spent time at Tiger Muay Thai, you can see the fruits of that labor. Phil, I, those knees were very important. It shows his opponent, if you try and clinch with me, it's going to hurt you. And he is absolutely chewing up that lead leg. Can he defend the takedown here? Pops right back up, negating the takedown, negating the threat and potential points scored. Feels so hard in mixed martial arts to get somebody down. Harder still oh, to hold him beautifully. there, and we've got a reversal. What he's been doing when they've been standing and he's within kicking range is he's taking out that lead leg, which then impacts the ability to throw shots of Jenny Beck off, the ability to get in for the takedown. Very, very intelligent Hooks work. in, Phil. May look for some shots here just to soften up. we got two hooks in. A little bit hard to finalize there with the fence that close. He's a little bit high. I'd like to see him try and flatten out just a little bit. A little high. Sinking a little off center now. Oh, Transitioning to mount. Just rides back it out. Back to beautiful. back mount. Oh, there's the flatten out that we called for. There's the pressure. There is Brave Nation. There is huge pressure now on the hips. Here we go. Down the short time. It's oh, over. Huge win for Ismail Nordiev. First round finish. The 14th. First round finish of his career. Big man barely broke a sweat kick. Ismail Nordiev completely reveling in the win. And here you see flattened his opponent out. Huge strikes. Brave Nation, that was a that was an exhibition of so many different critical aspects of mixed martial arts, and now we're getting another at Nation, what another explosive finish in our campaign event of the evening. This comes to an end at 2 minutes and 24 seconds of the very first round. Your winner, my TKO dinner strikes, Ismail, the Austrian wonder boy, This bout is presented by Brave Nutrition. Behind the athlete, there are hours of training. Behind every hard training is Brave Nutrition. Abdi Salam Ulu Kubanichbek is eager to finally get a crack at lineal champion Ahmed Amir as he looks to become the interim world champion. When he takes on Oshas Eskarayev, who shocked the world by beating former champ Lucas Miniero in his Brave CF debut. Coming up next, Abdi Salam Ulu Omak Kubanichbek takes on Oshas Kipchak Eskarayev.
for the Interim Brave Combat Federation Lightweight Championship of the World. And now, Brave Nation, it's time for a main event of the evening! Presented by Amir Timur Fighting Championship, Gorilla Energy Drink, 1X Bet, U1 Championship, and Akbarion Barakat. Two warriors are ready to collide inside the Brave CF Arena. Brave Nation, don't blink for this one. This will be absolute fire. Our main event of the evening with Brave Combat Federation Interim Lightweight World Title is on the line. Your three judges for this bout are Hassan of Darahon, Shermatov Abdu Fatah, Sharipov Izzat, and your chief referee from Uzbekistan MMA Association, Musayev Otabek. Your referee in charge of the action is the bandit, Jackie Lark. Two men enter. Only one man leaves with his arm raised in victory. Who comes out on top? In this amazing main event, it's time to find out. Let's introduce our two main event warriors, Brave Nation. It's time to be brave. Before we begin, I have one question for you and one question only. For all those watching in beautiful Bukhara, Uzbekistan, and the millions watching around the world, Brave Nation. Are you ready? <laughs> this is five five minute rounds for the Brave CF Interim Lightweight World Title. Introducing your first challenger. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 10 wins and 5 losses. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs already 69.96 kilograms. Representing Arlen MMA Pro Team and fighting out of Kazlarda, Kazakhstan. Please welcome challenger number one, Oljas Kipshak Eskalev. And now introducing his opponent. Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 18 wins, 3 losses, and 1 no contest. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs already 70.06 kilograms. Representing Sport Club Elas and fighting out of Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Please welcome challenger number 2, Abdi Salam Ulu Ovak Kupan. It's back! For fighter instructions, the bandit, Decky Larkin. Larkin is your man in the middle, one of the best in the business. This for the title. Both these men incredibly tough. Kubanich Beck's ring intelligence, which is a thing, is very, very high. IQ, it yeah. takes most fighters a minute to two minutes to see where their opponent's at. He's closer to 15 seconds. But Iskariev cannot be discounted. He is as tough as they come. I've been in the workout room with him. He is incredibly strong. Again, very smart. But again, Kubanich Beck just has that X factor, that intangible, that thing that makes him so dangerous and, and such a formidable opponent inside the Brave Arena. Looks like he's trying to load up the right hand to parlay that into the shot. Circling now to keep his foot in the outside of his opponent's foot. When he gets that and he gets the distance he wants, he's going to let that hand go. Iskayev needs to be wary of walking into that right hand. If he's forced to circle out to his left hand side, which is the power side of Kubanichbek, he could get caught with that big right hand. Iskariev tried to land that jab over the shoulder. Very, very tough when you're a southpaw and your opponent's in an orthodox stance. Can be done, but tough, tough, tough to do. Yeah, you kind of need to pat down that lead hand in order to land your jab.
Very smart to go to the body. Get your opponent's attention down a little bit. It's that much easier to land that shot to the head. And at fighters at this level, that shot to the head can end it on the spot. Especially with these little four-ounce gloves. You know, the guard that you would have in the likes of boxing or in the likes of Muay Thai is different because the glove will absorb a lot of the punishment. It's just not the case. We've seen it with kickboxers who try and transition to MMA. They leave these little pockets, these little gaps. Beautiful shot to the body there from Kuban Beck. What you saw right there, Phil, that's a champion's mark. When somebody does something to you, you do it back to them better. He's now getting Eskariev to bite on his feints a little bit. Didn't land flush, but that right hand is dangerous. Both these men trying to soften up the body. Lead uppercut to straight combination from Kubanich Beck. Seems the game plan is to soften up the body here. For for both men. Both men are are they're mirroring taking one another. the full they're taking the full measure of each other. They're mirroring. To me, yeah. I'm gonna do it to you. Nice lead looping hook. Each of these fighters has supreme confidence in their skill. Oh, huge shot over the top into the takedown from Kubanich Beck and this is where he really flourishes. This is where he does his best work. This is where he is at his most formidable and dangerous. Was in in a high crotch. It was denied the first time. It looks like it was the second time as well. Nice work from Iskariev to defend the takedown. I did see him in the workout room working a lot of get-ups, working a lot of takedown defense with his training partners. Very wise man, and that was a very wise elbow to the forehead from Omak. Great head positioning now. It's these subtle little things that Kuba Nietzschebeck does that belay that he is such a good fighter. There it is. But Iskariev again getting right back up to his feet or at least attempting to do so. Doing the right things. Pressuring the head. Hoping where the head goes, the body follows. And Kuba Nietzschebeck may be cut over the eye here. Kuba Nietzschebeck is cut over the eye. I did not see an elbow land it may have been one of those shots a little bit earlier Potential. in the fight it's also possible there was a cut during training and it opened up another strong possibility is an accidental clash of heads mm. this is all conjecture though we i didn't see it land doesn't seem to be a massive impediment over the eye right now it seems to be more to the side excellent giraffe fighting from omak the use of that head is so important. The head becomes a third hand if it's used properly. Denies the opponent the full use of his core. Escorea very wisely, I think, separates. Oh, that cut is just above the eye, actually. If Escorea can zero in on that. I'd love to see if we can possibly replay of where that cut happened, where it opened up. The doctors will surely be in in, the sec or in between rounds to get a look at that. Nice head kick coming from the southpaw. Oh, yes. Needs to be wary of leaning in when he throws that looping hook. Again, the take down from Kuba and each back. Phil Omak is fighting with a little bit more vigor. He, he may be worried about that cut. Ten seconds. One hook's in. Yeah. Closing stance of the round, but nice work by Skaryev. Finishes the, the, the round on top in the eyes of the judges. All right, call it, Phil. Who'd you like in that round? 10-9, 9-10. As you can see by our opponents, it could have gone either way. But all in all, very good showing by both fighters. The big worry, of course, is that cut. Oh, the there's, Brave there's the, there it was. There it was, Carrick. There was accidental the accidental clash of heads. Accidental head. clash of heads just skimmed one another as Kubanitsbeck was the one who was initiating the takedown. Thanks to our great production team here for finding that, putting that in front of us. Brave Nation, cuts can cause a lot of blood and not be dangerous. They can cause a little bit, but be in a spot right above a nerve, and the doctors have to stop it. We don't have the expertise at this point to know one way or the other whether that cut is very dangerous or whether it's, relatively speaking, a triviality. Decky Larkin runs a tight, tight ship. Round two just about to start. With glove touch, sign of mutual respect. If you're Eskariev, do you try and zero in on that eye, try and open that up a little bit more, make it bleed into the You sure the do, eye. and before you do that, you try and get him to think about something else. Get him to think you're trying to kick him in the legs, level change, Think you want, make him think you want to get in his hips, and then bang him right in that cut. Nice movement from Eskariev. 
Oh, huge oh, uppercut. Dazzling shot. Oh, he's hurt. Dazzling shot, Phil. Kuban Eastbeck trying to get it done early in the second round here. Landed two big shots. Kuban Eastbeck trying to take the back. He's very high up right now. He's well out of position to throw big shots. He does have a figure four now. Iskariev doing everything he can to try and turn in, but then again that illustrates just how dangerous Kuban Eastbeck. Something out of nothing. Brave Nation, this figure four position, those the locked legs around the torso is the most miserable form of control there is. It's, it, the, the ribs can hurt. It's very difficult to inhale. And of course the opponent can put you, can threaten you with a submission or further strikes. But Iskariev doing a great job of turning those hips in towards Kuban Ichbek. Oh yes, Iskariev is a beast. Triangle attempt. Skaryev really is something different, isn't he? Got rocked, got put on his backside, now he finds himself. Triangle's getting oh. close. Got to got get it. that foot underneath the knee and then twist the body a little bit so the two bodies are not lined up. But it's getting close. That foot is now getting. Now you got to get the knee to the ankle rather yeah. than towards the toes. He's in. We've bit. now got the, the, the angle between the bodies is formed. It's pressure on his foot as opposed to the shin being locked. Got to get the ankle rather than the toe part underneath that knee, and that doesn't sound like much. Believe me, it it's much. Difference. Switches to the armbar. Oh, and Iskariev is out. Fantastic, fantastic ability to wait it out, to defend by Iskariev. And we're right back up on the feet now. Oh, beautiful short elbow by Kuban Ichbek. Phil Iskariev was in a submission hold in his mind right now. He wants to put his opponent in one tight against the cage and oh yes Iskariev proving that he deserves his spot here to contend for the interim lightweight championship Kuban Hbeck consistently proving what we all know and that's that he is a very dangerous man take down from Kuban Hbeck Excellent top game, making every inch his opponent move. Sap a little bit more energy, throwing some shots to the head, threatening a hook. Got one in place. Opponent is now forced to keep that hip pressed up against the fence, trying to keep the other hook from going in. We get a leg grapevine briefly. Going to switch to the body triangle, it seems, has that leg flush across the hip line. 100 seconds to go. Switch, there it is, the body triangle is in. Kubanich back now, very wisely looking for the underhook from the back. Trying to prevent his opponent from turning in, as we saw the last time, and his, woo, Iskariev manages to turn in for the second time. Brave Nation, that is extraordinarily hard to do from that back figure four. And now he's in the position to land ground and pound to try and open up that cut above the eye of Kuban Ichbek. But Kuban Ichbek throwing shots and elbows from the bottom, feet on the hips, trying to create distance. Oh, Skariev in his haste to try and get in on Kuban Ichbek, has left a little pocket of space here. Kuban Ichbek slowly, methodically, looking like he's working his way to take the back here snaking that arm underneath the chin, but Skaryev is so game. Every time I think Skaryev is in supreme danger, somehow seconds later he's not. And we, we keep talking about how tough he is. He's also doing everything right technically. He's turning into Kuban Ichbek, he's negating the legs, he's defending the chokes. Not just tough, but also an incredibly intelligent fighter. Absolutely, Phil. Not just tough, because were it solely toughness, it wouldn't work. Kuban Ichbek hits too hard. Anybody, their biggest part of their game is that they're a game fighter, that they're really tough. They're not going to beat this man. Again, in that back, back tick. In, and, and second round ends. You want to make a call? I think it probably would have ended right there. He opted instead to switch to a wrestling game. Opponent was able to keep going. There it is. Look at that. And there was a follow-up. Boom! Drops his opponent again. Third shot. 
Absolutely phenomenal, perfect shot on the temple. Little left, little right, and then what I believe was a mistaken decision. Should have stood right up, called his opponent up. Touch of gloves, respect shown by both men. Who wants it more? Interesting, going back to the body again. May feel his opponent is tiring a little bit, or he may be trying to set up a shot to the head. My mistake, ladies and gentlemen, I misspoke saying this was the third and final round. Obviously, it being a championship fight, we have five five-minute rounds. I just get so carried away, Carrick, because I enjoy the fights. These are phenomenal fights. It's interesting, Phil Kovanichbek, and this is the third round now, seems to be getting a little bit stronger. He may be emotionally buoyed by having, we believe, won that second round. But his conditioning may be so extraordinary that he's basically just going into a second win right now. Well, as we've seen, Kovan Hbeck can maintain a pace unheralded in mixed martial arts and put that pace on his opponents. Big flare double. Eskarayev, in terms of conditioning, maybe fading just a little bit. Kovan Hbeck, anything but. It may be a strange thing to say, but the fighting style of Kuban Ichbek may lend itself better to these championship rounds. Yeah, he's a grinder. He's going to tire you out. He's going to hit you. Take a submission if it's there. Standing up with Kuban Ichbek on your back is, is a very, very tough prospect. He's probably going to take your back, probably going to slam you down again. Skaraya very wisely has his back up against that fence, wants to keep it. Going for a key lock, probably not what he wants to do right here. Again, Brave Nation, those shots to the head you're seeing, they appear to be little, and they're not fight enders, but they're, they're, they're miserable. This is causing damage. Oh, big shot right down the pipe from Kuban Ichbek. Oh, now elbows turning up the frequency. Double coming. Big, big shots by Kuban Ichbek. And again, it's really been a, a story of survival so far in the opening stanzas of this third round for Askariev. It's being ragdolled right now by Kuban Ichbek. Kuban Ichbek playing a, a top game that's smothering, keeping his opponent crunched forwards. The abdomen can't fully expand. Fighter can't breathe, making the fighter carry your weights. The legs get heavy, throwing constant shots, both to remind the judges who's winning this and to cause pain. And then you stand up, your heart starts to beat. You think you're out, boom, put right back on the ground again. It's heartbreaking. Momentarily, Askariev managed to get to his feet, but now he's back down, eating shots from Kuban Ichbek. Trying to get that hook in, establish that. One hook, two hooks. This guy needs to do everything he can to try and turn in towards Kuban Ichbek. Be interesting to see if Kuban Ichbek goes back to that figure four, that triangle on the body, which actually failed there it him is. twice. There he is, but this time he's got that leg lace. Yeah, he hooks the insole of his foot, the back of the thigh of Iskariev. Very intelligent work. Now got significantly better control than he did before. Oh, we've got danger, Phil. He is underneath the chin, but Iskariev is able to defend. Momentarily there, he looked like he was in trouble. Iskariev needs to roll to the side that the triangle is locked on to alleviate some of that pressure. So he needs to roll to the opposite side. But again, still throwing punches from that position is Iskariev. A minute left with which to work for Kuban Ichbek. Short time now, Brave Nation. Fight is likely to play out with what we've seen here. Eskareyev, very gamely, trying to throw some shots. Very hard to get leverage when your opponent has you in back mouth. That back body triangle, 
It's the very definition of misery in this sport. But he is doing a good job of not remaining static, not just accepting the position and letting the inevitable happen because sometimes a position like this will break a fighter's well where he'll put himself in the choke just to get out of the fight. Brave Nation, you'll know that happens if you see the chin lift ever so slightly. One or two centimeters, chin comes up, means the fighter doesn't want to be here. That is emphatically not the case here. Eskareyev turns around. First round, I believe he is ahead in this contest. He's getting stronger. I think in his corner, they're just going to tell him, keep doing what you're doing because you are working. Phil, any advice? You'd give Eskareyev if you were in his corner? Just lateral movement, work behind your jab. Have an uppercut loaded because I think you will see an inevitable takedown from Kubanichbek. But now, now they are. And this is the first time in the professional career of Oyas Eskareyev that he has gone to the championship round. So this is uncharted territory for him. And Brave Nation is very difficult to communicate how tough these championship rounds are. But both oh both men look pretty fresh. Both men still look in shape and ready to go. Neither welting, neither relenting, neither giving space. You always just feel that Cuban each back is waiting for something. Oyas is slowed just slightly. Understandably so. Going each back, just pressing forward, showing the right hand. Going each back, distance managing that very effectively. Oh, beautiful uppercut again. Landed more so on the gloves, but the threat of it is there. Next shot, is, next shot that lands with the hands is likely to be followed up. Oh, another shot. A little clash of heads again there, but. Oh, big Wobble. shot over the top. At this point, Omak does not want to start wrestling. No, he's he does not want to start wrestling. He wants to keep striking. He's doing the right thing. Maintaining distance. Big elbow again. Eskarayev calls his opponent in, but he's unsteady on his feet. Oh, beautiful uppercut again. And this is the more calculated approach that we called for at the beginning of the broadcast picking the shots not just ferocity for the sake of it but controlled calculated aggression Omak has a long time left in this round he is planning to finish this fight in this round brave nation oh elbows to the side of the dome from kubanich back kubanich back has a very clear runway to land now has that wrist control which is opening up the space for him exposing the head of iskariev and he doesn't need to land knockout punches here. He just needs to land frequency high shots. Skaryev, much to his credit, is trying everything he can to keep himself in this fight. Kubanichbek trying to pull his opponent away slightly so that he can sink down into mount, as you've seen there. The horrible thing about fighting Omak is you're getting punched in the face no matter what happens. Positions part way there, punched in the face. Positions all the way there, punched in the face. Omak got a little high, beautiful reversal. Full half of a round. Slightly paradoxical to say full half of a round, but you know what I mean, Brave Nation. Half of a round left, trapping the arm. This would be absolutely huge if Iskariev were to pull off the victory here. Thinking about switching to that stretch. Both of these guys are toughness incarnate, but Kovanichbek sneaks out. I feel like I could barely breathe there. That was an absolutely unbelievable moment. Again, the, the tension is absolutely palpable here. The Uzbek fans are on the edge of their seat. Brave Nation, this, we are in Uzbekistan. This is a wrestling culture. It is a combat sports culture. These fight fans know exactly what they're seeing and they are deeply appreciative. Nice shot to the midsection from Kubanich back. Just 
Does sidestep his way to bike. Looking maybe for a one-on-one. -on -one. Use that leverage to bring the opponent back. May lace up the legs here. May even just try and run it out to get into the fifth round. I think he may be feeling a scar. He have start to tire ever so slightly, which... Legs are shelved now. Iskariev trying to work that leg out without sacrificing the arms he's using to protect his head. As the hands connected and he's just forcing Iskariev to carry his weight. Referee Dick Larkin calling for a little bit more action. And he gets and it. He's getting a little bit more action. Short time now, Brave Nation. Down to the last few seconds. No question in anyone's mind, Phil. Kubanich yeah, Brown, as you alluded to, Kerry, the corner of Iskariev have to be telling him you need to go out there, give it everything you've got with your shield or on your sword kind of approach because he needs to finish if he wants to be crowned the interim lightweight champion of the world. On the transverse of that, you just tell Kubanichbek if you're in his corner to adopt the same approach, keep things smart, maintain your positional dominance, your positional control, land your shots and should an opportunity present itself, take it. The one thing Kubanichbek does not want to do is change a thing. He is now dominating this fight. He's shaking the arms out, the fatigue in the arms particularly. It's hot out still. The television lights are absolutely brutal. He's shaking that fatigue out of his forearms. One of these fighters is five minutes or less from interim glory. For the final time tonight, these fighters embrace in the middle of the cage. Five minutes to dictate who we will crown the interim lightweight champion of the world, setting himself up for an inevitable collision course with our champion Ahmed Amir. Takedown attempt, takedown scored by Iskariev. Iskariev now needs to get past those legs. He needs to pass that guard. Ground and pound, not likely to win him this fight. Now he needs to go to work from here. Kubanichbek, happy to be here, trying to set up the beginnings of a triangle choke right now. Smart with the bicep control as opposed to wrist control. Wrist control often indicates what you're going to do. That bicep control could be misinterpreted as being purely defensive. As you said, Phil, very smart technical move there. Iskariev really needs to square off the hips. Needs to be where he's getting his back taken again here. There it is, the back take from being inside the guard to the back take. That is the MMA intellect of Abdi Salam Kubanichbek. Body triangles in place, leg is laced. Going to be very, very hard for Olyas Eskarev to get out of here. He has successfully any number of times now. He definitely has it in him. But quite simply, Kirik, survival is not enough for him to take the win and indeed the championship. Kubanich Beck now appears intent on securing a submission. He's throwing some little shots to the face, not to win favor with the judges, but to try and get his opponent to make a little mistake. Right now, Askarev is not. He's driving back. Brave Nation, if there's a little bit of space between your hips and your opponent's back, it's fairly easy, relatively easy to get that choke in. When the opponent is right tight up against you, head almost even with yours, it's very, you don't, you lack the leverage to get your full strength behind that choke, behind that squeeze. He's doing everything he can to sneak it in. But Iskariev, like, it's incredible that Iskariev, potentially, if it continues this way and he loses the fight, he has enhanced his reputation on the international stage. Undoubtedly so. Absolutely no question in my mind. Win, lose, or draw. I want to see Olyas Eskariev again and soon. Now 
more so defensive. For Again, the Brave Nation, lines. when that head, when the fighter who has his back taken, has his head up nice and high, very close to his opponent's head, very hard to get the choke in. Half Nelson momentarily by Kubanichbek. Kubanichbek has a mighty squeeze. He can go from. Oh, Iskariev once again turns in to Kubanichbek. This is incredible Absolutely stuff. Absolutely fantastic show of fortitude and technique. But right now he has one minute, 35 seconds with which to work, with which to finish Kubanichbek, with which to become the interim lightweight champion of the world. Can he do it? He cannot do it inside his opponent's closed guard. Needs to roll those wrists inside to free them up. There's one. But Kubanichbek surely knows that all he needs to do is hold on in this situation. He may know it, but riding out a W is not his style. Mm. He's going to dance with a gal at Brungham. And that was being a very aggressive fighter, aggressive wrestler, aggressive kicker, aggressive striker, aggressive with the submissions. But both these fighters showing that they are absolute cardio machines. Kubanichbek opened those feet. He could have stayed Kimura. inside it. Now he's looking for a submission. Kimura At the attempts. beginnings of a key lock. He released it, but he's going to be looking for something else. Oh, transition into side control from Iskariev. Very impressive. Really needs to go to work with elbows or something here. Again, Kubanichbek is just so smart knowing exactly what he needs to do to shut down the offense of Iskariev, to prevent him from landing those big strikes such intelligent work from Abdi Salam Kubanichbek very very short time brave nation there, there we have it that final beautiful gong fantastic What an incredible main event we had here. Give it up for both of these warriors in an amazing main event. After five rounds, we got the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored about a unanimous decision victory. And new Brave Combat Federation Interim Lightweight Champion, Abdi Salah!